Wasting time switching between VS Code and GitHub? Today we're going to simplify your workflow and integrate GitHub directly into your VS Code editor. I'm going to walk you through the entire process from creating a new repository to completing pull requests. We're also going to work on remote repositories without even cloning them. Be sure to stick around to the end where I'm going to show you a bonus tip for working with GitHub. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeremy and this channel is all about helping you to become a better developer with the latest tools and techniques. All right, let's get started. Up first on our list, I'm going to show you how to create a new GitHub repository. So let's say we have our application here. We've been writing our code but we haven't actually initialized this repository yet. So in VS Code, if we come over to source control, we have two options, initialize repository and publish to GitHub. If we choose initialize repository, it's just going to initialize the local repository on our local machine. If we choose publish to GitHub, it initializes the repository and then also publishes it to github.com. So in this case, I'm just going to click on publish to GitHub and you may get a prompt asking you to sign in. Just go ahead and do that and then come back to the video. So here it's asking us for our repository name and whether or not we want it to be private or public. I'm just gonna call it my awesome app and make it private. And now we can see that it's successfully been published to GitHub and we can click on this link to open in github.com. So I'm just gonna click that. And in the browser, we can see that github.com has initialized the repository and here it is. We can also see that it committed the code and called that first commit. And that's all there is to it for creating a new repository in GitHub using VS Code. Now let's take a look at cloning a repo from github.com locally so that we can work on it in VS Code. So back in VS Code, if we open up the Explorer, we can see we have this option to clone repository. I'm just gonna click on that. And then we have the option to clone from GitHub. I'll choose that. And then after some loading, we are presented with a list of all of our local repositories. But we're not limited to just that. We can also search for other repositories that are public. So for example, if I wanna search for the Angular repository, I can see that I could clone the Angular repository to my local box. I'm just gonna clone the repository that I just created, my awesome app. And then we get a pop-up asking us where we want to save the code. I'm just gonna click on select as repository destination. And now it's asking us, do we want to open this in this VS Code window or open it in a new VS Code window. I'm just gonna click on open, and now I'm ready to start working on this local repository that was cloned from GitHub. Now let's take a look at creating a new branch. So if I come over to source control and click on the little menu up here, I can choose create branch. We'll give this branch a name. So feature slash my new feature and hit enter. We could have also done that with the command palette using command shift P create branch and selecting that. So now let's go through the process of changing the code and publishing this branch. So I'm going to come back in here and I'm just going to modify the readme. So I'm just going to select all and say my awesome app and save that. Now, if I come back to source control, I can see my changes and I have an option to commit the code. So I'm just going to stage my changes and then just say updated readme and then click commit. Now that code has been committed, let's go ahead and publish that branch. So I'm just going to click on publish branch and that's it. The branch has been published to github.com and I can verify that in github.com. We can see this little alert that says feature, my new feature had recent pushes. And if we want to, we could open a pull request, but we don't want to do that in the browser. We want to use VS code to do that. So let's come back to VS code and we need to install the GitHub pull request extension. So let's come to extensions and search for GitHub pull requests. And here we can see the official GitHub pull requests and issues extension. And we're just going to click on install. Once that's installed, we see we have a new icon for GitHub. So let's go ahead and click on that. And it's loading our pull requests for this repository. We currently have a new feature branch and we want to create a pull request for that. So right here, we can click on create new pull request. And we can see that we want to merge our feature branch into main. It also auto fills the title. And if we want, we can add a description here. So updated readme to be more awesome. And then we'll just click on create. And here we can see that it opened up the pull request directly in VS Code. We also have a couple of other options here. We can see that this pull request is currently checked out. We have the option to check out the main branch. We can refresh this pull request, rename the pull request, or copy the link to the pull request in GitHub. We can also copy the VS Code.dev link for this pull request. So if we click on that, we can paste that into the browser and it opens up VS Code in a browser hosted at VS Code.dev and we can see the code from there. 
We can also modify the code and just work on this in the browser. This feature would be used if you want to send a link to your pull request to a teammate so that they can take a look at it without them having to pull down the code or change their current working environment. So back in VS Code, we can see that we have the option to merge the pull request using create merge commit, squash and merge, or rebase and merge. Creating a merge commit includes the entire history of that branch and adds an additional commit for merging the branch. That commit may be called something like merge pull request number one. Squash and merge squashes all of the commits on that branch and just merges it in as one commit. This is good if you want to keep a clean commit history. Rebase and merge adds the commits from the feature branch to the base branch without the extra commit from the create merge commit. So in this case, I'm just gonna choose create merge commit and then click on merge. We can see that it has no conflicts with the base branch and I'll just click on create merge commit. And now the pull request has been successfully merged. Now we can choose delete branch. We're gonna delete both the remote and local branch. And now if we come back over to GitHub, we can see that we have no open pull requests and in source control, we can see that we're on the main branch and we need to pull down two changes. That would be the commit for updating the readme and the commit for the merge. So I'll just click on that and pull down the changes. There are several other things you can do in the command palette with the GitHub pull request extension. So if I hit command shift P and then type in GitHub pull request, I can see that I have several other options. Now let's create a new GitHub issue. So if I come back to the GitHub extension under issues, I can hit the plus sign to create an issue. This first line is gonna be the issue title. So my issue, I can assign it to someone. So I can just say at jshanks. And it's cool that it auto fills that. I can specify a label, a milestone, and then I just need an empty line before I start the description of the issue. So this is the description of the issue. And now if I come to the top right corner, we can see this check mark. And by clicking that, we'll create the issue. So we'll click on that and we don't want to save the new issue.md. And then now I get a pop-up to copy the issue link. So I'm just going to click on that, open up the browser and paste. And now we can see the issue that's been created in github.com. So back in VS code, we can also under issues, see my issue. So now if we want to start working on this issue, we just come over here, click on the arrow, which will start working on the issue and check out a topic branch. So we'll click on that. Now we can see that a new branch was created, jshanks24 forward slash issue two, and I can now work on that issue. So let's come back to the code and let's just open up the readme and make some changes. So my awesome app, this app is for demonstrating the use of GitHub in VS Code. And we'll just save that. And now if we come back to source control, we can see that we've auto-populated the commit message with my issue fixes number two. I don't want to use this commit message, so I'm just going to change it and say updated the readme. And it really doesn't matter for this application. I'm just trying to demonstrate the use of GitHub in VS Code. So I'm just gonna stage these changes and click commit. And now I just need to publish the branch just like before. And now it's asking, do we wanna create a pull request? So let's go ahead and do that. Create pull request, update the readme, merging the issue into main, let's create that. And now let's just close out that pull request and just come back to the GitHub extension and we can see here's our open pull request. We also see this option to stop working on the issue and leave the topic branch. Let's just click on that. And now we can see that we're back on the main branch. If we come back to the GitHub extension, we have the option to check out that pull request using this arrow on the description. And here we are back on that issue branch. And there's the full workflow for cloning a GitHub repository and then working on that code. Now let's take a look at remote repository workflows. So back in VS Code, we need to come to extensions and search for GitHub repositories. And here's the extension, GitHub repositories, and just click on install. Once that extension's installed, you'll see that you also get Azure repos and remote repositories. That's totally normal. Now we can see that we have the remote explorer. And if we open it up, we have the option to open a remote repository. So I'm just going to click on that. And here we can see that we have the option to open a repository from GitHub, open a pull request from GitHub, or open repository from Azure repos. We're just going to open a repository from GitHub. Just like before, we're given a list of the repos repos we own, but we can also search for other repos such as the Angular repo. And there it is. I'm just going to work on the My Application repo. That's not to be confused with the My Awesome app. 
So if I click on my application, we can now see that we're in restricted mode and also my application has in square brackets, GitHub. So first let's talk about this restricted mode. This is a mode that VS Code goes in that prevents automatic code execution in VS Code. So this includes VS Code tasks, debugging, workspace settings, and extensions. In this case, I don't want to run in restricted mode, so I'm just going to click on manage and say that I want to trust this code. So we can see that VS Code has opened up this repository, but it's not open locally. We haven't cloned this repo. VS Code is running in what's called a virtual workspace, and there are some limitations for running in this virtual workspace. So for example, if we come to debug, we can see that we can't really debug because that would be actually executing the code locally, and we don't have the code. If we open up the terminal, we see that we actually can't run the code there either. VS Code tasks will not run in a virtual workspace, and there's going to be some limited language intelligence. This includes go to definition and IntelliSense. It's also important to note that some extensions won't work the way you expect or may not work at all. This is dependent on each extension and whether or not they've been written to work in a virtual workspace. If you need any of these features, you should definitely clone the repo using the method we talked about earlier. So now you may be saying, well, what's a point of this. So the point of this is you can make simple, safe changes without actually checking out the code, such as updating the readme or working on other things like that, and then just publish your changes right back to GitHub. So now let's just go over creating a branch. It works just like before. Come to source control, open up the menu and create a branch. We'll just call it feature my new branch. And we can see that any uncommitted changes are going to be applied to the new branch. That's totally normal. Let's go ahead and switch to that branch. And now if we come back to the remote explorer, we can see that we have the main branch and a check mark beside the feature, my new branch. So we can see that that branch is what's currently checked out. But if we want to switch branches, we can just click on the arrow beside main branch and it switches to that branch. One really cool thing about remote repositories is you can make changes on branches and then check out other branches and those changes stay on that branch. Let me demonstrate that. So here we are on the my new branch. I'm just going to come up to the readme and we're going to make some changes. This is my new branch. We'll save that. And now let's come back to the remote explorer and check out the main branch. It gives us a message that we have uncommitted changes and we can pick up on these anytime by reopening this workspace. We'll just click continue. And now if I open up the readme, it's just like it was before in the remote explorer. I can click the drop down and see the changes that were applied to the feature branch, but not on main. Now on main, I'll just update the readme and say, this is the main branch, save that. And I can come back and check out the feature branch Hit continue. And you can see the readme is the one from the feature branch. We can also come into the remote explorer and right click on this readme file and say, apply changes. This will apply the changes to our current working branch. I'm not going to do that in this case because it'll probably just throw a conflict error. We can also come down to the GitHub pull requests and create a pull request or an issue, just like we're working on the code locally. So all in all, I find the remote repositories to be a good extension for just checking out code and taking a look at it and just making simple changes. A while back, I came across an extension that allows you to open up files and issues directly from VS Code in GitHub. Let me demonstrate. Let's come to the extensions and we're going to search for open in and we'll choose the second one, open in GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab and VS Code. We can see that it has 1.8 million installs and I'm just going to choose install. Once that's installed, we'll come back to our code. And now if we right click on a file, we can see three additional options. Copy GitHub link to clipboard opening GitHub and open pull requests. Let's just choose opening GitHub and we can see that our browser opens up with that file directly in github.com. We can also choose open pull requests and we can see that it opens up the latest pull requests for that file. I use this extension to send links to files and pull requests to some of my teammates when I'm working with them. And that's all for this week's video. If you found this content helpful, check out this other video where I go over the best Git extensions for VS Code. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.